the next currency of the world will be for the people, for humanity as a whole, that will not be related to a particular geography. Welcome to the Digital Commonwealth Conference at Mansion House in London. Here, Farzam, the leader of South Africa's largest crypto exchange, Valor, will share his vision for a global currency. Um, it's a great, wonderful privilege to be here with you in London. Yesterday I had the bounty of going about an hour north to the new South Brunswick Cemetery, Brunswick Cemetery, where there is a resting place of a very special person called Shori Effendi, the guardian of the Baha'i faith. And to set the tone for the next few minutes uh, of, of my time with you, I'd like to read a little quote from him that's really profound. He said, if long cherished ideals and time honored institutions, if certain social assumptions and religious formulae have ceased to promote the welfare of the generality of mankind, if they no longer minister to the needs of a continually evolving humanity, let them be swept away and relegated to the limbo of obsolescent and forgotten doctrines. Why should these in a world subject to the immutable law of change and decay be exempt from the deterioration that must needs overtake every human institution? For legal standards, political and economic theories are solely designed to safeguard the interests of humanity as a whole and not for humanity to be crucified for the preservation of the integrity of any particular law or doctrine. And I love that because we're living in a world of tremendous change. And if you look at all aspects of our life right now, our social structures, our political institutions, religions, political parties, the world is becoming more and more disunited, divided. You know, if I say three letters or a word about which political party I belong to, I don't know you, but I've immediately divided myself against you. There's all these assumptions that we have about ourselves. And when you look at this world that's so divided, and you think about it in the context of history, it makes sense. We used to be groupings of families that were divided, that used to feud, that came together to form tribes. Those tribes used to feud. They then came together to form city-states. The city-states feuded, which then came together in about the 1600s at the Conference of Westphalia to form the nation-state. And that's where we are today. But our technologies, our communications, the internet, transcend these boundaries that we call the nation-state. And the nation state today is suffering a tremendous existential crisis. When I talk to some of you in the break, I don't ask which particular plot of earth you're from. Should I engage with you? Should I not? What color is that book that you have in your, in your travel documents? That's your passport. And should we engage or not? These are things from the past that still exist today that are becoming less and less relevant as we move towards a world of globalization. And one of the things, we're here to talk about blockchain and technology and cryptocurrencies, but the financial system today is so fragmented, so divided, so, so cut along identities that are related to the nation state, mostly. Europe obviously has a euro, but most, most nations have their own currency. And we look at the US dollar today being the reserve currency of the world, I don't need to spend time today, I think most of you are versed in the fact that we've seen a, a huge amount of the US dollar being printed in re recent years. Up to about 40% of all US dollars have been printed in the last four years. It's an astro astronomical number. And what we do know for sure is that the dollar is not here to stay. The dollar is not here to stay. There will come a time, and I think it might well be within my lifetime, that the US dollar will not be worth the paper it's proverbially printed on. 
And when you think about that world, what is next? We've come from a series of different reserve currencies, but I don't believe that the next reserve currency of the world will be associated with a nation state or a particular group of people. The next currency of the world will be for the people, for humanity as a whole, that will not be related to a particular geography. So for me, it's very clear that the next world currency isn't going to be uh, vying between the, you know, the uh, Chinese renminbi or any other currency, but that it will be based on cryptography. It will be based on some type of a technology that belongs to the world, because we're living in a world where trust is being degraded more and more. And there needs to be an option where we can opt out of that. However, I do believe we're in this pendulum where trust and moral depravity is close to its peak. And when we look at the history of the human race, it is times like these where tremendous change happens. I often wonder, what did it feel like at the beginning of 1914 to be alive? What did it feel like at the beginning of 1939 to be alive? There was no conception at that point in time that two catastrophic world wars were about to take place. Are we on such a precipice? I don't know, but I think that the current status quo cannot continue. There are many injustices in the world right now that need to be remedied. Why do I go into this? <clears throat> the reason we started Valor about six years ago now, and about 700,000 uh, uh, customers, um, and the largest exchange in, in, in South Africa and Africa as a whole going global now, is because we really do believe that we have a role to play in this transition. Many people can sit back and wait to see what will happen beyond the receiving end. I love what Amit said, or I think it was Amit that talked about being the architects of the future rather than the victims. And that's also the role we chose to play, which is what will that future reserve currency of the world be? It's not for us to choose, it's for the people to choose. <clears throat> and hence, building a cryptocurrency platform that now hosts over 90 cryptocurrencies. And while I have my own views about what that will be, it's the market that will finally decide through the buying and the selling pressures of what will ultimately prevail. But it's not just a question about price. It's not just a question about which will be victorious. We have a real fundamental belief that these discourses in society that pit the crypto community against you know, the, the, the bankers, or, these are false dichotomies. And at Valor, we choose to work with anybody that wants to promote the unity and the oneness of the human race. We deserve better as humanity. I have two children, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And when I look at the world that we're bequeathing to them, I worry. I worry about the disunities. I worry about the lack of integrity. I worry about the fact that most politicians, you cannot tell what's coming out of their mouth, whether it's truth, truthful or it's falsehood. And that's not the exception. That's becoming more and more the norm. And so we need to move back towards a world that has more values, that has integrity, that has truthfulness. But the beauty about the technologies that we're in this room talking about is that it gives people the option to say, you know what, I opt out. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can trust you. And so we have self-sovereignty in a financial system that this new technology provides. So on that note, I'd really like to welcome you all. Look at your lanyards, Valor, that's, that's who we are. Join us, partner with us, talk to us. If you're here to help promote an ever advancing civilization, we want to speak with you, whether it's AI, crypto, blockchain, whatever it may be. The inspiration for Valor is to create a better world. And I know that many of you in this room, I've had many chats with some of you, have similar aspirations and similar hopes. And it's not enough just to be based on technology. We have to bring back values. We need to bring back integrity. And I hope we have many partnerships with many of you in the room to bring back a little bit of that world, which we have no choice but to do. Otherwise, the world is gonna be in a very difficult place for our children. So thank you very much. Have a lovely conference. The main message yes. is that of unity, that the world is one, humanity is one. 
we're moving from a divided world to a united world. And we need to be the protagonists in that change. And how are we going to do that? So we're all doing it in different ways. At Valor, we're providing a platform for the world to discover the next world currency, the reserve currency of the world, that will not be identified as a nation state, but will be distributed, decentralized, and available for all human beings around the world.